Hashtag no offense uses strong language and is intended for a mature audience. Listener discretion is advised. Hashtag no offense. What's up? This is Bobby Moore from the Simmons and Moore podcast. Fuck you, Chris Wutzke. <laughs> oh, my name is Adam Simmons from the Simmons and Moore podcast. That's very, very, very funny. Very, very, very rude. Shout out to Wutzke. Shout out to Duchess. I um, love you, Dutch. <laughs> HT and Nas. Only on the Inner Circle Podcast Network. You are now listening to the Inner Circle Podcast Network. Welcome back to another episode of Hashtag No Offense Show, episode 167, htnouse.com, htnouse on all the socials. My name is Chris, joined once again by my super duper lovely co-host, the Duchess. Hello. Welcome back, babe. Thank you. It's good to be back. Yes. Elmi did an okay job filling in while I was gone. You better give him some slack, okay? He's going through some things right now. He's being canceled. I wasn't... I was being nice. You were trying to, anyway, I don't right? like that hard cutoff. That's amateur shit. Well, I don't have a slider. What do you want from me? Maybe You just if... turned the volume down. I did, and it went off. Okay, so if you want professionality... There's literally a slider, I'll buy the microphone thing. If you want professionality, you will upgrade this board to the roadcaster. I'll get out of here. So, we're back. You were gone. I and was then, in and Hotlanta. Then you were in Hotlanta. Hey, hold on. We got colorful cups in front of us. Let's let's start this, and we can sample these while we're doing All our. All right. So our this shit. is some new shit. The, we we got a new product that was made available to us. Like sometimes uh, we get we get samples provided to us to give feedback for. This is for an alcoholic beverage called Wave. It looks like King Trident. Yeah, it does. <laughs> That's how I was saying. And there's a bomb on it. There's a bomb on it's it? I didn't know b- that. flavor bomb, I guess. I didn't know that. So we got four different flavors. And if I have to be honest, uh, I don't have high expectations. It's a malt beverage, I'm sure. I appreciate um, I appreciate that people want this is actually for you. This is these they send these drinks to the Dutch because Well, I liked the other one, the punches. Those were good. The punches. In the in the boxes. Oh, beat box? Yeah, beat yeah, boxes every, were psh, good. Everybody knows you like beat box. <laughs> everybody knows. This looks like kind of something similar. So what flavors have we got here? Uh the first one we have is peach. Then we have blue raspberry, pineapple, coconut, which is probably gonna be <laughs> and then we've also got water. We'd be tropical. All right, so we'll sample these while we do our business, okay? Which one do you want to do first? We'll start with the peach. Peach. All right. Cheers, babe. Glad you're back. It smells peachy. It does smell like peach. It's not bad. It's what I expected it to taste like. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's kind it's of... good over ice, probably. Probably better over ice. It's kind of four loco y I don't think I've ever had a four loco. What uh? What percent alcohol are we working Ten. with there? Ten per- oh, fuck. <laughs> Ten percent around alcohol. Okay, peaches. Peaches are all right. It burns a little bit. Yeah. Oh. It has ginseng Ooh. extract, Ugh. sea salt, and green tea extract. So what you're losing weight while you're fucking getting drunk? Is that is are those all weight loss uh, yeah. promoting activities? Green tea extract for sure. For sure. Mm-hmm. It's a yeah, it's a little burn on there. Uh, Amateur. Oh, yeah, I know, right? So, each and every week, the Hashtag No Offense Show is sponsored by Hemp Bomb CBD. Hemp Bombs are specifically formulated to provide consumers with a quality CBD product at an affordable price. Uh, the many benefits of Hemp Bombs include reduced anxiety, increased sense of relaxation, reduction of aches and pains, mood enhancement, and deeper, more restful sleep. Uh, Hemp Bombs come in a wide variety of different products, including oils, gummies, suckers, vapes, and even products for your pet. Use code HTNOS, that's HTNOS at HempBombs.com. Save 20% off of your order of their fine CBD products. Word word to your mom uh where what one are you going with next blue raspberry blue raspberry looks like fucking windex it does i said i feel like i'm coloring easter eggs because they're all these colors are you drinking the whole cup hell no (laughs) we we had a little bit of a wild night last night too which we (laughs) where i think we're taking it easy tonight but bottoms up that tastes like the bottom of a fucking freeze pop yes Better than the peach. Better than the peach. For sure better than the peach. I bet if you uh, 
if you froze these a little bit and made them kind of slushy consistency. It or, tastes like them icy pops your mom brought over. That's what I'm saying. If you maybe if you even take like a freeze pop and you bust it up in here and you have it sw- you swish it around maybe like make a little frozen version. It could be. I could I could see that. I could see that. Ooh. <laughs> Hashtag No Offense Show is also sponsored by Onnit.com. Onnit is a health and fitness juggernaut dedicated to delivering complete and total human optimization. Through a wide array of products and supplements, Onnit combines cutting-edge science, earth-grown nutrients, and time-tested strategies to help people reach their peak performance. Alpha brain, new mood, uh, gut health, fucking total human, Shroom tech. everything. Shroom tech, of course, Shroom tech. Get that extra juice. They're all... Uh, they're all nootropics. They're all basically just getting help you get the best out of yourself. Yeah. So visit onnit.com. That's O-N-N-I-T.com. Use code HTNA. Save 10% on whatever you choose to make yourself a better version of yourself. Yes. <sighs> next is watermelon. Next is watermelon. I am very stuffed all of a sudden. I was doing okay, and now, now I'm... Probably because we have so much fucking pollen around this house. Around, well, we did a lot of outdoor activities today, okay. and uh, it was. I, mean, I feel like I was fine. It was catching up to me now, though. Maybe your allergy medicine's wearing off. I don't you. know. Let's let's medicate with some watermelon wave. Mm. It tastes like watermelon. It tastes like hubba bubba. Hubba bubba. Hubba bubba bubba. Or what? That's the right stuff, right? Bubble gum. Mm-hmm. What What is your overall opinion of these? It's not my jam. I don't like the flavored shit. This I... was this was like I said. These are sent to you because you're the flavor queen and you're the drunk and uh-huh. everybody everybody wants your opinion. This is product research. Like this is very important to this company that they get the opinion, uh, accurate representation from Dutch on these products. I like the product. I think it would be better over ice because they're not very cold. And I just pulled them out of the beer fridge too. I feel like if I drink too much, too many of these, that I will get a headache. <laughs> oh, I feel that. Yeah, I feel that for because they're for, real sweet for sure. They're real sweet and Absolutely. they got a lot of alcohol in them. All right, well, and this we'll, is going to be this is my favorite one, so we saved it for last because pineapple coconut normally we, yeah is, we tropical is my shit. We're a tropical uh, couple. We're tropic people. Beach the whole the whole jam. Yep. All right, let's do it. it smells like suntan lotion. Mm. That's the worst one. That's the worst one. Yeah. That's disappointing. If I a gun to my head, if I had to pick the one I would drink, like my preferred, it'd probably blue. be the blue. Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna marry these all together here. I do one. Drink, 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 drink. You want me to do one? You want me to do a suicide? <laughs> what do you give me if I do a suicide? A blowjob. Not really though. <laughs> as I'm getting backpedal, as I'm sliding this cup, I'm like, oh, I bet, fuck. <laughs> Oh, don't do it. I don't even get not one dick sucks? No. No dick sucks at all for this? No. Come on, man. Reward my stupidity. Just I like... do it every day. All right, here. I'm going to try. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to drink it again? No, I put it back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my God. Well, that was fun. Just like we were kids, right? Uh, yeah. I hope the fine folks at Wave uh, enjoyed our sampling and appreciate your uh, your product research. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you were gone. You said you was in Hotlanta. Yeah, I, that was two weeks ago because we we missed last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me about it because I th- in two weeks you haven't told me not one thing about your trip. You, I don't know if you were saving it for the show or if like some scandalous shit happened up no there. Scandalous shit. Um, it was uh, my friends getting divorced. Scandalous. <laughs> so um, she has a big ass fucking house. And her soon-to-be ex-husband ain't doing shit to help her out. And he's always in Tampa for work. So I was like, you know what? I ain't seen your house. You've been there for like four years. I'm like, I'm going to drive up to Hotlanta and I'm going to spend the weekend with you and help you clean your fucking house. Oh, that that's amazing. You drive eight hours to clean. Yeah. Dude, and we I got was- cleaning to do here. God damn! Yeah, I do that shit too. <laughs> But it took me like, well, I wanted to leave early from work and then it was busy, so I didn't get to do that. So I didn't get there till like twelve thirty one in the morning. I tried to fucking tell you. So then uh we just kinda laid in, laid in bed and talked and then fell asleep. The next morning we got up, got some breakfast and we ate at this like little place and we're like, Okay, this place should be good because it looked like a little hole in the wall and usually those are good. Man, it was like the worst breakfast I've ever had. I think oh, it was yeah? called like Johnny's or some shit. Uh we got skillets and the potatoes were like extra crunchy like they've been sitting out and it would the coffee tastes like 
brown water. It was just bad. It was it's just, essentially what coffee is, babe. No, coffee's coffee. This was not. This was like coffee's bean juice. This was like somebody brewed a new pot of coffee with old grounds. Like it just wasn't. It had no flavor. It was really bad. So then we would go back to the house and we we literally cleaned until nine o'clock at night or eleven o'clock at night or something like that. It was all fucking day. I was on my hands and knees scrubbing grout and. Okay, well, yeah, we don't need to hear go into the details of your cleaning techniques, do we? Mm, no. <laughs> what did you but do? We cleaned the fuck out of that house. Then we HGTV'd that shit. Bought some fucking uh, cloth napkins and like fold it. We Googled how to fold them so they looked all nice on the table. You didn't, you didn't know that. How to, no, why would I have cloth napkins? I ain't bougie. You're not. I use paper towels. You're a goddamn Duchess. <laughs> did I still use paper towels? And then Saturday night, we tried to get everything done Friday so we could go out Saturday. So we went to this place called the Beltline. It kind of reminded me of Riverwalk, but with bars. Riverwalk in, in Brandon? I guess it'd be more of the Tampa. I don't... Have I been to the Tampa Riverwalk? I don't fucking know where you do. You live a very mysterious life. But it's basically just one stretch of like road. And uh, there was like all kinds of people there. There's like a shit ton of people, rollerblades, dog walkers, there's a fucking volleyball court, there's like all these um, under the bridges and stuff, there's artwork, so there were photo shoots At nighttime? On. No, it was, it was like afternoon, we left at like three o'clock or something. Oh, you're making it sound like you went out at night and there's just fucking nighttime volleyball games and fucking nighttime photo shoots and no, shit. No, it was like and three o'clock or something, we went out there, we walked around, we got a snack. And, Atlanta uh, does it different. Yeah, well, they party all the time, I guess. But we went to this place and got a snack and some drinks, and then we walked around, and then we went to this barbecue place, and uh, I was excited. I, I like margaritas. That's, like, my shit. So I was excited that they had these, like, different margaritas to try. So I get the first one. I forget what it's called, but I take a sip, and I'm like, this shit's pre-made. Like, it was just bad. What do you mean? Like, Applebee's, like, in a bucket? Yeah. Like, it was pre-made. Like, dollar margaritas, just a yeah. vat? Pretty much. Ew. But it was like $9 per drink, and they gave you these little ass cups of it. That's sick. So I was like, that's gross. Then I asked for another one, and I sipped it, and it was pre-made. So then I called the bartender over. I'm like, are these pre-made? And he was like, he just pointed up, because there had this thing, and it just had like the, the tubs of booze or whatever in it. So I wasn't paying attention, because me and Elena were talking. So I was like, okay, whatever. And then I actually, I asked him to make me one. I'm like, can you make me a pineapple jalapeno margarita? So he made it for me out of fresh jalapenos and pineapple juice, and it was really good. So I sipped on those. And then uh, we were going to go somewhere else, but then she got, she's been talking to this dude that were, that was going to DJ at the Chicago pizza place called Nancy's. And I was like, if that's what you want to fucking do, I'm fine. They got pizza. I'm good. I, let me tell you, like, their, their deep dish pizza was fucking delicious. It was just like Giordano's. Deep dish pizza. You know, I was following these exploits on social media. I, mm -hmm. I think I saw a picture of that because Adam was talking shit to you. And, like, I saw the... Yeah, because he says it's a pie. I mean, it's, whatever, dude. I don't really need to start that shit. But I would, it, your eyes progressively got lower oh, and yeah. lower. You know, R Riley said his favorite thing to do that weekend was to follow your drunk exploits <laughs> on social media. Yeah, I just... I'm really bad with knowing when with my limit is. I get to the point where I'm having so much fun. And then I'm like, oh, shit, I'm fucked up. I yeah. Had, I just didn't. That's how that shit happens, man. But she's more responsible than me, so she was fine. And then she drove, and then we went and saw this dude DJ. And then after that, we we went back to the house, and that was it. And then Sunday, I woke up, and I'm surprised I made it on the road when I did. Yeah, I was sitting here editing. I, I talked to Jason on Saturday, and I was doing my normal uh, workshop on Sunday, and you came in early, man. I, I was sitting here working, and you busted through the studio door, and I was like, oh, shit, I didn't expect to see you. Yeah. Well, I got up, and I felt like shit. I, the plan was to like, wake up, get breakfast, do some touch-up cleaning, and then go, but I woke up, and I was like, I'm getting my shit, and I'm getting out of here. Because <laughs> if I don't leave now, then I'm not going to leave, just because I just felt like so much shit. So then I started driving, and I probably had the worst McDonald's experience of my life. Are there ever any good ones? What the fuck? I don't even eat that shit, and I'm a fat fuck. So I I was like, first I pulled off at McDonald's, because I thought breakfast ended at 10.30. 10.30. It doesn't. What time? 11. Same shit. So I pull in and I'm like, hey, is it too um, is it too early for lunch? And they said, yeah, we serve breakfast. So I got a McGriddle. So then I drove for a few hours and I'm like, I'm going to get this other McDonald's because I really wanted a fucking cheeseburger. 
I really wanted well, a McDonald's why a cheeseburger. McDonald's cheeseburger? McDonald's I don't know. is horseshit. I don't know. So I get off the exit in Lake City for this McDonald's. Trifling. I pull up. This McDonald's is in a gas station, which I've never seen. I've never seen a McDonald's in a gas station. That, Not one time. That doesn't surprise me. I've been there. To a gas station McDonald's? Yeah. Well, I, babe, that's my shit. I'm, I, I see a lot of things. If it involves a gas station and fast food, chances are I've seen it. All right, so I pull in. <laughs> this McDonald's was so shit, shitty. It was the boards had the paper menus in them still where you had to like go out and open the doors and like flip them Throwbacks. manually for the lunch menu. So I go and I order my food. I pull around. They hand me my drink. They hand me my food. They gave me no ice in my Coke. They gave me <laughs> no straw. They put a whole goddamn bottle of mustard on my cheeseburgers. I'm like, this is the worst McDonald's I've ever eaten in my life. It's terrible. And the fries were underdone. Which McDonald's fries is like the best. How how are they underdone? Are they cold? No, they weren't cooked all the way. So the, it was raw potatoes. Ew. That, that they like flash fried. Fucking sick, dude. Yeah, dude. I'm like, ugh, this is the worst. But I still ate my cheeseburgers. <laughs> You're even so, though, oh my god, dude! Even though they were all mustard, that's a fucking. That's like, um, I don't even know what you would call that. That's like a fucking social experiment. Like they, that, like they, they had people watching you. They had that double, double sided mirror, and they were Maybe. watching you and shit. And they were like, "Let's see how much we could push her, and how much she'll take, and still eat this slop." And they're just fucking piling it on, I would piling doubt it, it on, piling it on. And you're, and then you just sit there, and you're like. Well, I wanted down a cheese- the hatch. I wanted a cheeseburger so bad. Go to was- fucking somewhere good. I didn't want anywhere good. I wanted McDonald's. That's sick. That's you get what you get. But then I got home about four, and you then I went it. straight to sleep. I know you did. You slept the rest of the I fucking took, day. No, I took a nap for like three hours. I got up at seven, and then I helped with the baths and stuff for the kids, and then I went to bed. Yeah, went it's to bed. essentially the rest of the fucking day. It's the, thanks for collecting your medal for fucking helping with the baths. Shut up. <laughs> It was uh, a long ass drive. Next time I'm flying, because after I did that, I looked at tickets and it's like seventy dollars for a round trip. It's not much. I mean, it's only an eight hour drive. So what is it like a forty five minute flight? An hour or something. Yeah, fucking. Why not? I guess. Did you uh, Did you enjoy it though? I mean, like for what it was. It was a lot. It was of a quick. Fun. It was a quick week. A little quick turnaround. Yeah, I got know? to see the grandbaby because her her son and his girlfriend lived there with the baby. Mm. So I got to see Eli. And uh, that was sweet. I mean, I, I didn't hold him or anything because of COVID or whatever. But Well, I'm glad you're back. We missed you. Uh, I got a chance to talk to Jason because, like I said, he's going through some cancellations. Mm-hmm. And I feel like he kicked off this shit, dude. Like, he the, the, he was a target. They went after him. And then all of a sudden, like, all this other shit happened. Like, Pepe Le Pew happened and Mr. Potato Head happened and Dr. Seuss happened. Why, why is it all children shit, too, by the way? You notice a theme there? Lola well, yeah. Bunny. They took Lola Bunny's titties. Of, yeah, I know. All of this well, shit. Well, I feel it's because they want not to not send the wrong message to our youth. Yeah. Did you did you uh, pay attention to any of that when you were a kid? No. No. Of course you didn't. Pepe fucking Le Pew. Pepe Le Pew's right. He, he does the same. He's got the Joe Biden move, dude. He fucking swizzles around and smells you and shit mm-hmm. and fucking tries to put a little kiss on you. It's funny. It's it's a cartoon. Right. Is, is, is all it is. I liked that one of the guys commented and was like, I'm so glad that this monster's off the air. Now my kid can go back to killing hookers in GTA for not, so he doesn't have to pay him after sex. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I mean, it's fuck. It's it's it really is. It's fucking right. true. What kids are watching uh, goddamn Looney Tunes these days? You know, nobody. My, our kids don't. No, they wa- well. I mean, Lucas will watch Animaniacs and what was the other Looney Tunes? The uh, um, oh, Tiny Tunes? Yeah, Tiny Tunes. He's pooped out now. I was going to call him in here to record his bars. Oh. <laughs> he's, he's, Let's he's, do that. Yeah, he's pooped out. Well, I mean, like, we are we missed last week. I was going to say we're a day late. We're a fucking week late, you know? And then last night, I was setting up to record. And, I mean, like, I'm in here with the headphones on waiting for you, and I couldn't find you. You were, like, through mm-hmm. a smoke bomb and shit, and you were gone. And come, come to find out, you're doing shots in the neighbor's driveway and shit. That's why you're all yawning and shit in the mic right now, because you're tired and you're fucking hungover. I'm not hungover. Yeah, the kids were outside playing, and when I pulled up, um, I saw them outside, so I looked over, and, you know, I waved or whatever. Came in the house, because uh, I accidentally sent our dinner to my work. Yeah, 
That was fun. I left work, got the kids their food, and then I was like, he's, I got a message saying the DoorDash is approaching with your order. And I was like, all right, cool. Then he never showed up, and I got a text message saying, hey, I'm here. I was like, oh, man. I sent it to my fucking work because we had got pancakes last Friday. Pancakes? Mackenzie wanted pancakes. Who the fuck door dashes pancakes? It was first watch. It was good stuff. What's wrong with y'all? It was good. Pancakes. We Motherfucking pancakes. We wanted breakfast. So door dashes I some never, fucking flapjacks. I never changed the address, but I'm also a big advocate of everything happens for a reason. In this situation, I was a dumbass. But I pull up to the back, because I told the guy, I'm like, just, if you can open the double doors, leave it on the desk, and I'll come pick it up. So I get there, and there's a girl standing outside the door, and I was like, hey, do you have a key card? And she goes, no, I wish. And uh, I said, I said, okay, well, I have one. I just have to get it for my car. I go in, I get it, I come out. I was like, are you looking for somebody? And she's like, no, I had a job interview. I'm just waiting for a lift. I said, well, where do you live? And she's like, I like five minutes up the road. I said, I could take you. So then she's like, really? And I was like, yeah, it's no problem. So she gets in the car and we start talking or whatever. She interviewed for the other side of the building because we share a building with an, uh, the insurance company. Mm. She interviewed with them. So then I started talking to her about like our company and what we do. And she said, I was looking for something overnight and all this stuff. I said, we have that. I said, I gave her my information. I took her home. And um, she's just like, man, God works in mysterious ways. So I feel like I was I was put in that moment for that reason. So we'll see what happens with it. I mean, this is awfully nice of you. I mean, like, you could have ended up dead, but, I mean. Well, I think I see myself in a situation like I, if I was standing outside, like, she looked lost. Yeah. And so I was like, do you need help? Are you looking for somebody? But I I would want somebody to ask me, you know. And uh, I said, just don't mind my car because it's a mess. But then she ended up living off of three, like, in between 301 and, uh, or um, MLK and 301. So it wasn't that far. It was, like, the apartments that are across from Sable Park. Mm, she, took you to, work. she took you the opposite direction of home, too. Yep. And I was like, with our husband, dinner. My husband's going to be like, why is my food cold? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I gave her my email address. Too. I told her, look at the website. If you like anything, send me a resume and I'll get it to the right people. Right. But it was it was almost weird because she was going, uh, she's a receptionist at a dentist's office and she was going to be a dental assistant. I was like, how funny. I am a certified dental assistant. <laughs> and then when I realized you don't make any money, I started doing other shit. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. And she said that's the exact reason why she's not wanting to, because there's nowhere to go. But yeah, so then I got home, and after we ate, I'm laying on the couch, and then Logan comes in from playing outside, and he was like, hey, Caroline's mom wants you to come over. And I was like, all right. So then I go over there, and it's her, and then another lady that lives on the other side of the the block or whatever, and they're fucking wasted. Yeah, I got they a gl- I got a glimpse shots. of what it might be like to live in Uncle Randy's neighborhood. Yeah, you know? dude, it was so cool. I was like, I was like, this this is cool. So then they're like feeding us fireball, and like all these other shots. It's like Crown and Cranberry, and you know they were really cool. And they've got three kids, and all the kids were just playing. So they they've got two next doors, and the other people have three kids, and we have two. So it's just a gang of kids running up and down the street in the dark with all these Nerf guns. It was fucking cool, man. Yeah, it turned into a straight up block party. And I mean, (laughs) ultimately, that's why we didn't end up recording. But, you know, like if you think about it, though, we got done hanging out over there. We came and sat in the hot tub and we did like a fucking hour and a half unrecorded podcast in the hot tub. Yeah. You know, like we just sat out there and fucking bullshitted for a long ass time. We should have, we should have ran the zoom. I mean, it would have ended in you getting mad at me because I was, I was fucking wasted Yeah. unexpectedly. And you got, you got mad at me and you stormed off. So it wouldn't have been, a, I was, well, it wouldn't have been a great podcast, but it might've been a great podcast. Yeah. People like drama. I don't fucking know. They do like drama. <laughs> Um, so, but we, I've been collecting questions and I've been collecting submissions and things like that while, while you were gone okay. and then the week we missed and things like that. And, uh, we got a late, late edition on the voicemail box. So I'll play that first and cool. then we'll get into some questions. Okay. That sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Please leave a message after the tone. Hey, it's Tina, your friend Riley over at the plunge, over at Plungeons and Dragons over at Justified, sometimes over at the Royal Mumble, as you may know in the Inner Circle Sports Podcast, uh, frequent flyer of the Hashtag No Offense Show. Uh, but enough about me. I'm pretty <laughs> distraught right now. Um, so I was listening to some Elton John, as 24-year-old men do in 2021. And I'm listening to Candle in the Wind. So a certified bop, you know, fucking banger, if there ever was one. 
Is that is that what you would call a certified bop, a fucking banger, if there ever was one? Yeah, dude. I mean, it's it's awfully emotional. I mean, it's it's, it's something. Emo- it's a ballad. It's I, definitely not something I would ever refer to as a certified bop. But I mean, to each their own. It's right? like meatloaf song. It's like meatloaf song. What is it? <laughs> I I don't know. I want you to I want you to say the words. It like meatloaf song. It's the meatloaf that meatloaf song. You know which one? I would do anything for love. Yeah, that one. Yeah. And all my life. I, for some reason, believed I knew what it was about. Because when I was 11, I went to summer camp in East Bumfuck, New Hampshire. And I'm now... Was it fat camp? Band camp. Band camp? He's not tuba. It doesn't matter. He's still a nerd. Uh, I'm putting my money on it. That's why he's got a soft spot for the movie Heavyweights. I'm putting it on fat camp. Mm. Realizing that my... Uh, what's the fucking... You're the person in charge. The fucking camp counselor... He, we were on a hike or something on this weird back road in East Bumfuck, <gasps> New Hampshire. This is the story and he told of all of us, us campers no. in Cabin 9. He said, this road here, this road here is where the song Candle in the Wind was inspired. And it was just a fucking <laughs> dirt road in the middle of nowhere. And he was like, yeah, this is where Marilyn Monroe crashed her car and Elton John wrote a song about it. Or like a, one of the Kennedys, I think. He was like, yeah, the Kennedys crashed their car here and she died and Elton John wrote a song. And I believed it up until now. I'm listening to it, and I'm like, can't believe that this song would, was made in New Hampshire. And then I realized, I just had a fucking troll camp counselor who lied to us. He also told us we were on an Indian reservation, and then he looked at a quarry full of sand and said that's where they filmed the, the scenes from Star Wars Episode One. And I believed all of it up until now when I just put it all together. I'm fucking 24. I've been believe, believing these things for fucking 12, 13 years. And now I'm pissed off at Camp Counselor Matt, who also claimed he got attacked by a bear. Now I'm starting to think he didn't get attacked by a bear. <laughs> so fuck you, Matt. And fuck, fuck you, whatever Kennedy may or may not have died in a back road in New Hampshire and then gotten written about by Ellen John. That's all I have to say. I don't even know if there's anything to this, but fuck you, Camp Counselor Matt. And fucking, I can't think, and fuck you, Kyle. All right, peace. That's right. Uh, always fuck you kyle thank you for that I, I i didn't want to pause it again but uh and i'm not what you would ever call a smart man but i do believe that uh i remember that song being wrote about princess diana i think so yeah i like marilyn Monroe and she the kennedys mean, she, were not, not yeah. anything to do with anything no i believe and then you know what i mean we have a google machine why don't we just yeah just google it kind of in the wind uh, I mean, it's got to be about somebody dying. No, we're wrong. What's it about? Oh, shit. It's... Oh, well, we're both kind of right. Okay. All right. So, it says, Candle in the Wind is uh, blah, 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 music and lyrics by Elton John, written in 1973 in honor of Marilyn Monroe, who had died 11 years earlier. But then here, in 1997, Elton John performed a rewritten version of the song Candle in the Wind 1997, not just a clever title, oh. as a tribute to Diana, Princess of Wales in 2004, blah, 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 blah. Uh, that version is number 347 of the 500 greatest, greatest songs of all time by Rolling Stone magazine. All right. I knew that it was about the thing, so we're both wrong, okay? That's a fucking draw. It's a dealer push, Riley. Okay. That's really shitty of your camp counselor, though. Yeah, I mean, I, f- I feel like that he's got some some other baggage there because he had, that guy had those kids on that back road, and then they was lying to him, trying to fucking tell him stories and shit. I can't believe that they he believed that they filmed Star Wars there. That's a- I mean, why wouldn't they? It's New Hampshire. It's the greatest land of all the lands. I mean, they did film Transformers and fucking Hammond. So. That I still, to this day, I still that fucks me up. <laughs> and they filmed it while we were in Florida. But yeah. Because we, we were we were driving home. We had moved home, and we are in the U-Haul, and we were there. We were getting off to go to your mom's house, and then the fucking, like, the expressway just ended. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? I don't remember it being like this. And we had to get off and detour and shit. Yeah. And they were like, oh, yeah, that's where Michael Bay blew up the expressway when he filmed Transformers and shit. And mm-hmm. the state of Indiana just decided that they were going to pocket the money and not rebuild the fucking <laughs> the, the fucking Sounds like Indiana. State. 
That might be one of those urban legends, though. I don't fucking know. That's what everybody says. Who the fuck knows? Uh, thanks, Riley. I don't know if there was anything in that. No, I think you just, I think wanted, just wanted to say story. hi. Yeah, I think you just wanted to say hi. Cool. Love you, Riley. Hi, Riley. Uh, yeah, that voicemail is uh, 813-773-5706. If anyone else has anything that they want to get off their chest, if they have any questions, if they would like to verbalize these questions, uh, 90% of them come through our email or the website. But, I mean, if you want to talk, I mean, you want to hear yourself on this fucking show, call the goddamn number. Rosie's grumbling. Well, she's angry. Yeah, we left her home a while today. <laughs> we had a long day. This is a, this is a couple weeks old. Uh, it's from somebody that goes by Big Wayne. Uh, Big Wayne wants to know, is it stealing if you're given food that you didn't order at a drive-thru? No. That's their dumb fault. Just plain and simple. Just no. Yeah. No. No. If you you found a $20 bill in the street, would you pass it up? Well, it would belong to the street, right? Well, I mean, technically the food belongs to the restaurant. That's what I'm saying. Like you, that has it's coming from a place. If you find a twenty in a street, I mean, that's just yeah. But the fast food places just hand you shit out the window and then you drive away. Yeah, and that's so that's, I'm not gonna turn around and go back to be like, oh, you gave me the wrong thing. Yeah, no, I I get that. My thing always takes me back to when I was 19 years old mm-hmm. or 18 years old, and Taco Bell used to have those grande meals. Remember those? Yeah. For 20 bucks, you can eat Infinity Tacos. Yep. Like, they would just give you this fucking box with never-ending tacos. And it was me and the dude that lived on my couch and my ex-girlfriend in the drive through at fucking Taco Bell. And we ordered so much food. We were... I don't know if we were fucking high or what it was, but we ordered Infinity Tacos. And they handed us two bags, and they were like, have a good night. And I hadn't paid yet. And I was like, bet! Took the fucking bags, peeled out of the parking lot, immediately got into a fucking car wreck. That's and I, different. <laughs> immediately that's the, stealing well they gave it to me right and but said have a good night like i mean he now they gave the wrong food no right? no 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 it said is it stealing if you're given food that you didn't order oh oh if you didn't order yeah so like if you had like an extra spicy nugs in your bag or something right no nah, that's, that's not, just that's fucking casually that's collateral you're damage stealing. <laughs> You're a bad person. I am a bad person, dude. And I have the the universe immediately got even with me, dude. And I've I've walked out of the store like at Target all the way to my car, saw that I had laundry soap on the bottom that I forgot to pay for and took that shit back in and paid for it. Word? Yes. That's that's good, man. You don't want for fucking fifteen dollars or whatever laundry I don't want soap that costs. Yeah, you don't need that on your bill. My dude. aura. No, that that's that's fucking shit you don't need on your debt, mm-hmm. dude. I say, yeah, I say fucking it's not worth it, dude. I mean, like, if you get all the way home and you find you got an extra spicy chicken or whatever, I mean, like, fucking good it for you. It makes up for the times fucking they good fuck up you. your order, give you no ice with your cold. Yeah, or all that mustard. And they don't make mustard. your cheeseburger plain. They put all that mustard on Right. There. Fuck a mustard. Fuck a mustard, she says, Big Wayne. <laughs> uh, but no, you go, bro. <laughs> uh, we got one from Randy. I don't know if that's Uncle Randy. But he could, would say Uncle he Randy. He would say Uncle Randy. Maybe th- we got one from Randy before. Maybe this is the same Randy. This might be Yay. a repeat Randy. It just said, so what the fuck are you guys flat earthers now? <sighs> no. I take it you listened to Creatures with David Weiss uh, a few weeks ago, Randy. Um, no, no, we're not fucking here's i feel like i'm repeating myself and i feel like it's not it's not genuine but i mean like you you can't be fucking sure right you can't be fucking sure i'm 100 percent sure that this earth is not flat but I, with uh, okay so apparently gravity is a lie you and told me that you told me that, that on this ago. podcast I know. on this podcast on this internet radio program you said gravity is a lie and i looked straight at you and i was like what the fuck are you even talking about now that i see your side you're like well um, what did they think gravity is a lie. no 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 that's not what i'm saying i'm saying that when i said that i was joking were you because we were talking about conspiracy were you? theories and I, with the government and i'm like everything's a lie fucking gravity's a lie blah 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 I, I so don't think so. That, I'm going to find that clip. So, I'm going back. So the way that they have the flat earth mapped out, it has all these caverns and stuff that just, it looks like fucking geomites or whatever it's called. You know, like the cave shit. What's geomites? What are the stagmites? Stalagmites? No, that's hollow earth. You're you're mis- you're conflating. No, I'm not. Are, no, are you sure? It's flat earth and it has like the, the bottom of the earth looks like stalagmites and shit. And I'm like, the ocean's way too deep and water is way too heavy for it to look like that. I don't know. You're going to have to show me what you're talking about. I don't even know what you're talking about. It was the video that was on your show. I, I, that was like a month ago. I don't even oh remember fucking yesterday. Are you, are you kidding me? All right. So dinosaurs are not real. 
Well, and see, and we it, did a little bit of investigation on that. Like, Joe B wants to do a show about that kind of thing for, like, around his birthday. He wants to come on Creatures with Bobby Moore because Bobby Moore doesn't believe in dinosaurs. And he wants to talk about how he has a theory that the dinosaurs evolved into the reptilians, which, I mean, I'll entertain anything, but, like... Come on, Joe. Well, uh, the law, the rule of evolution is things evolve. So, I mean, we still have dinosaurs today. Alligators are dinosaurs. Alligators are There's certain dinosaurs. fish, sharks. I mean, they've just evolved and gotten smaller. You yeah. Know, it'd no. be, it's it's just different. Everything's related to something. Well, he told me that they they the first dinosaur was discovered in 1853 or some shit. All right. Which I'm like. Did nobody just dig for all those times? Like, we just found dinosaurs like 150 fucking years ago? What was the point of digging before? I don't know. I, the point would be the same thing digging now, I guess, like to fucking try to unearth past, you know. No, I civil- feel it, the first one was an accident. I feel like maybe they were trying to build a settlement or something and they were digging in the earth to like lay down some kind of foundation for a home and they hit something. I was like, what the fuck is this? I don't think that they were intentionally looking for anything. I think that's well, no, how a no, lot no, of no. things are found. Yeah, I don't think... Well, so, yeah, you can't set out to look for something you don't even know exists. Exactly. So then when it existed, when they found out what it was, and they were like, what the hell? Then they start looking at things that exist in this time and say, okay, well, this bone looks a lot like this. And that's how... It's all theories. It's all theories and Well, exactly, and- exactly. It's all theories and it's all guessing. And that's where my catchphrase, you can't be sure of fucking anything comes from, dude. Like, I'm open to literally everything. Like, I won't tell you. Even if I think, even if I think, like, in this instance, like, I think that what... I, what what we're told is the truth. Like, I, I don't think there's any grand conspiracy about the fucking shape of the planet, okay? Even that being said, there's certain aspects of what we talked about that do resonate with me. And the fact of the matter, like you and I have even talked about, I think we talked about it last night a little bit, that it's not the the shape that's the problem. People get caught up in the fucking flat verse round, and that's just, that's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is the, the, the fact that the, the powers that be would lie and cover some shit up like they're known to do. And that right there, the lie is the fucking, is the problem. If you know what I I'm see, saying? Who fucking cares what shape the earth is in? Who cares if, I don't really care if they're lying. I'm living my life. See, and that's what like I mean, that's what Bobby said, and I'm sure that's how a lot of people feel. Uh, I where it gets interesting is if they're lying to cover up like extra territory, like extra lands, like down in Antarctica that might have extra civilization or extra resources or things like that. That's kind of fucked up, you know. Like, what are you, we gonna do with them? It's not that we're gonna do something with it, but like, I why would, do we need to know about it? Because like, why would we not need to know about it? What are we gonna do about it? Oh, that's cool, and then keep fucking scrolling because that's what we do. It doesn't matter if they're hiding something because we're just gonna look it, at it and say, I think it "Hey, does. look at that." What if they're hi- What if they're hiding like the fucking the the key? You know, what if they're hiding what like key? the key to like? Are we in player one now? The key to no, well, not literal key. You're so fucking literal. Would you <laughs> just what kind of key? Like what? If, what if the the territory that they're trying to keep from us? What if that's got the fucking the goddamn stargates and shit? What if that's what got is the, the stargate? A uh, means of travel through out the universe. You, well, you walk through the stargate and you end up on the other side of the fucking universe through a wormhole. They should keep that shit secret. Why should because they keep that shit secret? Fucking dumb people like you will probably try to go through it. <laughs> it and should make end it for dying. the people. They should. Be, Where it, are they gonna go? They don't know how it works. They're just going to go in the universe? Yeah, and then what if you just pop out on Captain Marvel's planet or something, and then, like, you got all... That's why they need to keep this shit a secret, because Captain Marvel is not real. How do you know? (laughs) This is ridiculous. I know, and that's why people think that I'm fucking 100% off the reservation, and no, Randy, I'm not a flat earther now, okay? No. I'm a lot of fucking things. I'm very woo-woo, I'll, I, whatever you want, I'm a tiger, fucking ra whatever you want to say, but I'm not a fucking flat earther. No. I enjoyed my time with David Weiss, though, you know, maybe yeah. he can come back and he can tell me some more shit, I don't fucking know. I just don't feel like he made a compelling enough argument to me to you know sway me there were some things that kind of came close you know and to the uh, parallel thoughts that i have you know but not really anything that made me like aha you know mm-hmm. he even gave me he gifted us all his app you know i get a notification from his app every day like yeah. with something new about like you know blah 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 flat earth and i've looked at it a few times and it's oh, just, maybe i mean there and it's funny that you t- mentioned the Stargate because, I mean, there's a big Bermuda Triangle. There's also an Alaskan Triangle. So, I don't know. Maybe there are teleports right there. 
That's what I'm saying. And that's like... But they're not hidden from us. We know they exist. Well, we can go to like the area where the Bermuda Triangle is. We can't go to Antarctica. Hell no. They, I don't want to go there. They won't, like, well, they won't let you go there. Like It's restricted. Mm. And so some people try to come back and say, no, you can't go there. But uh, what... I think where they do let you go is like a very small portion, you know, where like the scientists go and they take their pictures with fucking penguins and shit. And it's on National Geographic yeah, and it's probably. like, oh, it's National, it's uh, Antarctica and uh, the furthest reaches of the blah, blah, blah. And there's more shit that they don't let you do. Mm-hmm. Probably um, because it's uninhabited and dangerous. Uninhabited and dangerous, just like me. Avalanches. Avalanches and all them. Uh, we got one from somebody named Sarah. Okay. Okay, and I feel like this might be for you. All right. What's the easiest way to get over someone that you're in love with? I'm ready to move on, but it's hard. Hmm. I don't don't know why I feel like that's for you, but it's a girl named Sarah, so I feel like she's speaking to the Dutch. I don't think there's any easy way to get over somebody that you were in love with. Do you ever really? I mean, like, even even when you move on, I don't don't think you ever really, if it was really real, I don't think you ever really get over somebody. No, you I just move so on. Either. You just move on and have to just have to deal with it. And it's I fucking think tough. It'll yeah. I feel that you just need to find somebody else, and then eventually the other person will just be a part of your past. Well, and it's sometimes cliches actually make sense, and they're a cliche for a reason. You know, like time fucking heals. You know, the longer yeah, it, for the, most part. the longer it is, the more you know. The further away from that incident you get, the better you'll be. You yeah. know, yep. or the, kinda, not the better you'll be, the easier it'll be. The easier it'll be. I just feel like you just have to find your person and then it'll just be a memory and it'll get easier with time. Absolutely. I, I stand by that. But it is, it's fucking tough, man. Especially like, you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't have details or anything about these people, but I mean, if you're young, when you're young, dude, you feel like it is the end of the world. At least yeah. I could speaking for myself, you know, like I was like fucking, oh my God, what am I going to do? I'm 19 and I'm in love with somebody that doesn't want to be with me anymore. What the fuck am I going to do now? You're a drama queen. I know. I know. I look back and it's silly, you know, it's fucking silly. But when you're 19, you feel that way. So that's all I got for questions. Um, do you want to take a quick break and then we'll do some Florida shit? Sure. After these messages, we'll be right back. Yo, yo, what's up? This is Bert Sinatra. You're listening to the Hashtag No Offense Show. Oh, my third eye's been open, homie. Woo, doggy. Hey, Beatrice. Yeah? Get your ass in here. These No Offense boys are about to do well from Florida again. Let me grab the natty. Oh, shit, and I thought my family was fucked up. All right. Each and every week, our What the Fuck Florida stories are sponsored by Official Clothing. Rooted in hip-hop official streetwear company, creating high-quality t-shirts, hats, and jewelry at an affordable price. Featuring recreations of classic hip-hop and sports logos, as well as original de- designs, there is something at Official for all tastes. Visit Official.com, that's O-H-F-I-S-H-L. Use code h to save 25% off your order of handcrafted t-shirts, hats, and jewelry. That is Official Clothing. Live by your own rules. Motherfucker. Mm-hmm. So there's kind of a theme with our stories here that I have collected. And all it's right. it's unintentional, but they all they all go together like naked. they do sometimes. Naked's naked. usually a good bet. That's usually a good bet, but that's not the bet or that's not the winner tonight. Animals. Uh not animals. Trailers. That's, uh, <laughs> you're hitting all the usual suspects. <laughs> you're hitting all the usual suspects, but that's not Meth. The, not, <laughs> Bath salts. I'm sorry. You're you're you should be you should be more successful than you are. Baseball bats. <laughs> it's too specific. Lawnmowers? First one I got, we're in Jacksonville, where a Florida woman robs a bank oh my. and is caught fleeing in a motorized wheelchair. Oh, my gosh. It's a hell of a getaway. Yeah. It's like, how do they? <laughs> 39-year-old. I'm, I'm at a loss. 39-year-old Kenyatta Jordan, or Kenyatta Gordon of Jacksonville was successfully able to rob a bank she was visiting what? Uh, on Monday evening. She was successful? <laughs> but the getaway was less successful. Oh, okay. Maybe she should have reconsidered her getaway vehicle, her electric wheelchair. Gordon entered Regions Bank on West Bay Street and asked the teller to assist her in adding overdraft protection to her account. After the teller completed that request, Gordon then asked her to withdraw the money, to which she told her the, can- the transaction could not be completed. Mm-hmm. That's when Gordon became agitated, screamed profanities at the teller, and demanded money. 
The teller provided $100 to the suspect who then fled the building in her wheelchair. No. <laughs> that's you, not robbing a bank. That's really not. That's really not. That's that's misleading. Fucking clickbait. But why did she give her $100 just to go away? Like, So I guess maybe she wouldn't cause more of a scene. Maybe she had, maybe she had a fucking gun on her wheelchair. Who knows? Mm. She's packing. After after receiving identifying information from Regions Bank, officers located Gordon wearing the same clothing and using the same wheelchair as in the robbery. In addition to the stolen cash, a crack pipe was also found on Gordon at the time of her arrest. I don't understand if you're getting overdraft protection on your account and you say the transaction can't be completed and you give her a hundred dollars, just make her account a hundred dollars negative. Can they can they just do that right? Overdraft protection, like they'll give you like five hundred bucks. So say you're at the grocery store and you only have like four dollars in your account, but you need to spend two hundred. They'll let you do that. A word? Yeah. And what's that, the penalty? I mean, you have to pay that money back, but there's no penalty. There's no penalty, you're like thirty three dollars or no, something for. No. no, that's why if you go over the five hundred, there's a penalty. Hmm. But you just you know when you get paid that following week, then they automatically take that money back out. So it's kind of like a cash advance. That's weird. That's I don't, I, I don't do it. Well, obviously, I mean, yeah, I just know about it because I used to be a bank teller. You did used to be a bank teller. I mm-hmm. thought that that was your going to be your future. I thought you were going to be a, a, a lifelong career banker. I might. I probably could have done branch management, but then I got into coke and it changed my world. Like cocaine? No, Coca-Cola. cocaine's a hell of a drug. <laughs> No, when I worked at Coca-Cola. Cocaine's a hell of a drug. It when is, you worked at Coca-Cola, is. did they try to get you to be less white? <laughs> Not at that time. <laughs> Not at that time. I don't think being too white was an issue back then. You were in the pre the pre uh, white yeah, era. I was yeah white power back then. I guess that they were all about white power. Yeah. And then it shifted. Yeah. Well, I call them the big red devil. I, I mean, Co- Coca Cola is like the Nazi Nazi Germany. Oh shit! I shouldn't say that, or I'll end up like Gina Carano. I'll get mm-hmm. fucking canceled and shit too. Me and Jason will do a show behind Patreon walls together. That was stupid. It's called Cancel Brothers. <laughs> Lake City, Florida. Oh. Oh baby shit! Cheeseburgers. Mm-hmm. Florida man was charged with burglary after homeowners <laughs> returned. Burglary. And- <laughs> Homeowners return and find him on the couch watching TV. All right. This is a quick one. Florida man was charged with burglary on Wednesday after homeowners returned around 7 p.m. and found Jay Knight, 34, laying on their couch and watching TV while wearing their clothes. That's weird. (laughs) I don't get... Okay. I mean, probably drugs. Probably. Probably, uh, you know... He said that the area is bad. That is a sketch area. That's a very sketchy. There area. were so many panhandlers, and it I just off the one exit. Hold on, you said that, and I didn't. Uh, you sent it to me, and I didn't save it. The naked, oh. the naked cowboy got arrested in Miami for aggressive panhandling. <laughs> Was he shaking his dick and be like, "Give me your quarter"? And, he, and let me tell you what, he, uh, he looks old he too. Looks old they, and skinny. I, well, I guess if he you're was the career, guy that was on Jackass, right? He, I don't know, was he? There was a cowboy guy that danced in the street. Or maybe that was just party boy dressed like a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> I miss that person. show, dude. I fucking so miss good. that show. And when they just like that old dude, the balls were always hanging out of the, the shorts. Yeah. He'd like climb up a ladder. He's trying to get shoes. Yeah. And then yeah. his ball sacks was hanging out. It's Didn't hilarious. Tony Hawk do that with, with Johnny Knoxville? Yeah. Didn't Tony Hawk dress up like an old man yeah, too? Yeah, and then they were skateboarding in the street. Yeah, that's what I thought. And dude. he'd be I like all crippled shit. and shit, and all of a sudden he'd just jump on a skateboard, and everybody's like, what the fuck? Dude, I miss that. I miss Jackass and CKYs, dude. Mm-hmm. Those were good shits. Um, police arrived as Knight was trying to leave. He admitted to kicking the door to the home, took several items, put them in a bag by the door, uh, but before he left, he started watching TV. I wonder what he was watching. Knight was arrested, charged with burglary, petty theft, and criminal mischief. Yeah, he's mischievous, all right. I don't know. I mean, there's so many good things. I mean, like, we're, we're still playing catch-up here, too. I mean, we didn't talk about Wanda. Wanda ended yeah. while we were gone. We didn't yeah. talk about fucking how you, you've you been watching One Piece. I've been watching One Piece, and then you started watching One Piece. So, I mean, like, maybe maybe he, they had Crunchyroll. Maybe they had Crunchyroll, and he was just trying to catch up on some that fucking One Piece. You know, who, yeah. who knows? Yeah, WandaVision ended strong. WandaVision did end strong. What did you think about WandaVision since thought, we're going to take a little detour here what'd you think I thought the the first couple of episodes were tough to get through because you were confused and then after you realized that being said though didn't didn't you enjoy them on face value yeah I did too yeah I enjoyed them but I'm like where are they going with this and then I think it was the fourth or fifth episode where they finally get to the story of why she's I think it was doing four the, yeah when why she's doing these sitcoms is because that's what they used to watch with her parents 
um, when they were in Russia, and it's just like a comfort for her. So I thought I cried because I thought it was sad. That's a, it was a great it was a great series uh, for what it was. You know, it's like just used as it's going to be used as like a bridge. You know, which I think this was all scheduled before COVID, but then COVID happened and pushed back all the Marvel movies, so yeah. there hasn't been any theatrical releases. And this is so perfect. Like how it fit like that because it's it's wetting your whistle a little bit. It's bridging that gap between you know like the shit that already happened that you've mm-hmm. already seen and maybe forgot about. And now it's like, oh hey, you don't remember us? We got superheroes. What? Well, and I was excited because that lady from Step Brothers is like one of my favorites. You do like her? I like her so much. She's just funny. What's her name? I don't. Know. I forget her name. She's funny though, but and so it's like when she comes in the bathroom, she's like, "You always suck your dick," and he's like, "Ah no, <laughs> <laughs> it's like my favorite." Hi, my name is Jim. Want to suck my dick for money? No! <laughs> it's just me. Oh, my God. Hi. What about that, dude? We, we started... <laughs> he is hilarious. We, okay. D- up, Dutch, what? And, Dutch and I are notoriously late to, to everything. Okay. We're late for everything, okay? We miss shows. We miss... I, I'm worse with music. You stay pretty abreast on, like, pop music and whatever. When it comes to TV and shit, movies, we miss a lot. Things go by. Maybe not lately since we've been doing the show. No. We catch more, but, like, in the past. And... If you're on social media, you, you know, you communicate in memes and GIFs and all that shit. And mm-hmm. I've always seen the John C. Riley with the crazy hair making faces and shit. And I never knew what the fuck it was from. And then we just happened to stumble upon this show from well, like 10 did. years ago. What on, was it called? Uh, check it out with Dr. <laughs> Steve Brule. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so it's so your style. I push play on it, and it's like a spoof of a, of a um, it's like public between access. It's like two ferns with Zach Galifianakis, but with this dude. Well, it was total total spoof of public access, and we've all watched those shows. Oh, Anyone yeah. that grew up in the late eighties, early nineties, we've seen those fucking shows on the public access channels. Mm-hmm. And when I you were gone, you were outside doing something, and I put no, you were going, you went to get the food. Mm-hmm. You were gone getting the food, and I played it, and I watched the first episode, and I'm like, I'm gonna have to roll this back because this is your style. Mm-hmm. This is just dumb, stupid fucking comedy, dude. And I knew you were going to love it, man. It was so you know, funny. It kind of had, it not even the same thing. And I don't know why I'm going to say this, but it reminded me of Andy Milanakis' show. I and that's why I thought that you were going to love it. So I'm like, I'm going to stop this. Don't we're going to watch this a, again. Uh, I got cheese on my head, but don't call me a cheese head. I just try to get my tree fed. Yeah. <laughs> Bars. <laughs> But then on one of the episodes, it was uh, the the guy was playing a lady. And I was like, that looks like that, that pussy ass husband from fucking yeah, that was Gene. Eastbound and Down. And it totally was. Yeah, that was Gene, dude. Fucking mean Gene. <laughs> Got punched in the mouth and shit. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Kenny was like, he was, he was doing blow off of the stripper's butthole and shit. And his wife was like, what? <laughs> It's so oh, good. It's such a good show. I gotta watch that again too. Um, yeah, I just I, I don't know how I stumbled on that, but like we were it came out in 2010 for Christ's sake, and I've we've all seen the meme, dude. I've used that meme before, and I don't even know what the fuck it's from. Well, now you know. Now I know, and we're gonna watch it. It's how I want to know how the fuck there's five seasons of that. How well, in I mean, the, the fuck the episodes are only like ten minutes long. Even still, dude, come on. How much after we watched three of them, I was kind of like, okay, I get it. I'm I've, I'm done with this now. Oh well, I'm going to watch all of them. <laughs> so I'll do that by myself. Uh, but you know what I wanted to say about like the the Disney shit and the Wandavision and whatever. Uh, Wandavision ended and already it, there's a two week break and then already we're coming yeah, back Winter with Soldier. the Winter Soldier and the Falcon mm-hmm. and then that's gonna roll right into Loki and then Sweet. like they're all rolling one right into each other. So like when they end, the, you get a week or two off and then bam, the next one starts. It's pretty fucking genius, dude. I love it. And I don't know if they planned it that way pre-COVID, but it, it's going to work out. Mm-hmm. So I liked it a lot. WandaVision was a win. Yep. Uh, I don't know what to do with myself now because I've fallen in love with Elizabeth Olsen and now I can't see her every uh, week. Well, She's my can, new crush. I mean, it's still on. You can just go rewatch it. I guess I could. Like, She's the best. Well, I thought it was funny because uh, when my brother posted something about it on Facebook and you're like, give the people what they want. And it had John Krasinski as was the Human Torch. Mr. Oh, Fantastic. he's Mr. Fantastic yeah. or whatever. Reed Richards. And uh, I told my brother, I said, it's funny how Asian Jim Helpert's name is Jim in WandaVision. He was like, oh, shit. Because then yeah. he posted a picture of, yeah, yeah. you know, that or whatever. It was a little Easter egg, I think. Yeah, it, I thought it was it was good. And then I, I 
because uh, the purple witch in WandaVision, you found out was the Agatha who was the babysitter for the Fantastic, Fantastic Four. Four for Frankie. I think that she was, a, was she was few things like there was a whole list of shit she was. I'd never heard of her I, before. I looked her up, man. She's like an old hag lady. Like she was Agatha. Like a, her name's oh, that's what I called her. Oh shit! Because she. The lady that plays her is so pretty, and then when she turns into you the- think she's so pretty? I do. Really? When she turns into the witch lady, they made her like eyebrows all dark, and then she looked like old as shit. I was like, ooh. I mean, I don't. F- I, she's not unattractive, but I would like. I would never say she's so pretty. I think she's really pretty. I think she's like a beautiful, normal girl. She's not like a Kardashian or whatever. But I don't she- like Kardashians. No, I'm saying like she's normal, beautiful, not like fucking yeah. celebrity. Fuck yeah, fake dude. shit. That's my that's my style. I like it. All right. I like it. I think Elizabeth Olsen is normal style, right? She's too skinny. <sighs> you think everyone's too skinny? No, I don't. I don't <laughs> think my girl's too skinny. <laughs> my girl. <laughs> Lehigh Acres. That sounds familiar. We've probably had stories. We've been there before. before. We've been there a time or two. Right. Florida man was accused of jumping naked on a neighbor's trampoline naked. before breaking into the house. Why wouldn't they just arrest him for breaking into the house? Why do they have to say he was naked first? Because he was jumping on a trampoline naked and then tried to break in. Oh, okay. So he didn't break in. He tried to. That's they were I... home? Well, here. Adrian Lee Gonzalez Bradway, damn hyphen, 21 years old, was arrested Wednesday and charged with burglary and criminal mischief with property damage for more than $200. According to the sheriff's office, Gonzalez Bradway showed up naked at his neighbor's home in Lehigh Acres on Tuesday afternoon and began tapping on the door. Mm. The resident asked him if he needed assistance, but he didn't respond. He's and probably drunk. 30 minutes later, the woman said she saw uh, Gonzalez Bradway jumping on the family's trampoline while still naked. Balls Johnson flapping in the wind. Uh, when the woman saw Gonzalez Bradway touching himself, oh, okay. she called 911. According to the sheriff's office, uh, he ran up to the woman's door demanding entry. Mm -hmm. When the woman refused, he allegedly smashed through her kitchen window. Oh, my. The woman gathered her two children, a niece and a nephew, and locked herself in a vehicle while calling authorities. Lee County deputies arrived and got Gonzalez. As they pinned him down, the victim said she saw him eating grass and dirt. Uh, She's on drugs. (laughs) She said that he's known to use drugs and thought he was high when the incident happened. Probably. Now, if he was just jumping on the trampoline naked and didn't try to come in the house, I think I would just let him jump around. <laughs> jump up, jump up, get down. Masturbate. <laughs> <laughs> <That didn't suck. laughs> um, well, I think he saw her calling the cops, and that's why he got ag- aggressive. Yeah. I it's- think once you start touching yourself then it's like all right this is another level but if he was just like naked jumping around i'd be like oh you know old fucking gonzalez at it again hoo, you know like <laughs> old, old balls johnson gonzalez is at yeah. it again yeah, i'd probably go out there and spray him with a hose or something get, get out of here you damn kids <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. but what if he's got a full-blown erection you ever i mean you jump on a trampoline before i mean sometimes you you like fucking stumble and you fall or whatever you fall with that full-blown erection dude you break your dick break your dick or get caught in a spring caught get caught in, oh my god i don't even want to think about a dick caught in a spring <laughs> it's like putting it in a rat trap Cha-ching. Mm-hmm. okay i got one more for you all right two florida women dressed up as grandmas to get a covid vaccine no did you see this no <sighs> i saw i saw pictures of it it's very bad they could probably make some sort of a bad movie about it, you know, where like like they would get like uh, John Leguizamo and Wesley Snipes to dress up like ladies or something. You know what I mean? You can't be doing that. <laughs> Why? That's I, a federal offense. I don't think it is. It should be. <laughs> to dress up as a woman to get a vaccine? Yeah, because you're taking it away from people who need it. Who needs it? Not not one old fucking people. Not one Real fucking person needs that goddamn need vaccine. It. Yes, they do. Mm, okay. I'm about vaccines. Cool. I'm about vaccines Our too. Kids that are makes vaccinated. sense. Yeah, those make sense. It's like sense. a fucking flu shot. I don't get those either. I do. do you? That's why you're always fucking sick. I ain't always fucking sick. Mm-hmm. We never get sick. Me and the kids. You got them strong Polak jeans. Yeah, I guess so. Eastern European bars. Straight out the Eastern Bloc. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 
So two Florida women dressed up as grannies in an attempt to get vaccinated against COVID-19. Did they get arrested? Their wacky getup included the bonnets, the gloves, the glasses, the whole thing, said Dr. Raul Pino, the director of Florida Department of Health in Orange County. Workers at the Orange County Convention Center vaccine noticed uh, the women looked funny, in quotes, and stopped them before they could get their shots. There had also been an uh, issue with the ID and driver's license they provided. The duo was coming in for their second dose of the vaccine. Um, says he didn't know if they were able to get their first shot, and it's unclear if they used the same ruse. The incident was turned over to local authorities who uh, issued trespass warrants to the women. The Orange County Sheriff's Office said one of the women was 44 and the other was 34. Mm-hmm. In Florida, uh, only adults 65 and up, healthcare workers and assisted living residents are eligible for vaccine. Uh, Pino said that the number of people trying to falsify identities to get shots is higher than we expected. Security has been ramped up at the vaccination site as a result. Mm-hmm. I feel that if they have vaccines left over and you're waiting then you should get it but there's no reason for you to to go to this extreme i don't well i mean you know how i feel about it man there's no reason to go to any extreme i just feel that you shouldn't take things away from other people that need them i'm gonna try to find a picture of them okay because it, it was pretty hilarious hilariously bad rather look at that look at that fake hair it looks like she's wearing a knitted hat you see that yeah how how do you expect that that's gonna pass it looks like a poodle's on top of her head. That's really bad. Like, how did how did she think that that was going to work? Maybe it's supposed to be a hat. I think maybe it's like a like a hairnet. I don't think it's hair. I think it's like a babushka. <laughs> and then she's got a face mask on. A babushka. Well, the bitch next to her is clearly young. Like, she's not 65. No. And she had no get up. At least the other one was wearing like an old like house coat sweater looking thing and shit and... She had the, you know, she was in the spirit at least. Yeah, that bitch got her titties out. She ain't trying to be no granny. <laughs> Which, well, how you know grannies don't put their titties out? Um, I guess I don't. I guess you don't. <laughs> um, that's that's really all I got for you. Do you got anything for me? No, sir. I did want to ask you just one more thing though. What's that? We, I, I teased it a little bit. You, you started watching One Piece with me. I did. Was that intentional or was that accidental? Accidental. I was. I just really love the theme music. I, and ooh, I was just gonna say that. Listen, I had you. I was watching this shit. I've been coming home and busting a couple out every day. Well, you know, you're making dinner. I got it on. It's fucking something I could watch with the kids. You know, whatever. And I caught you in the kitchen singing the fucking theme song as you're making dinner. You're standing in front of the stove and you're just fucking singing. Climb aboard and sing along with all your hopes and dreams. <laughs> it's catchy, right? It is catchy. And then at the end, they're like, um, they're like, there's always room if you want to be my friend or however. I was like, oh my gosh, that's so nice. <laughs> it's very positive, right? It's very positive. So then I don't know what episode we're on now, but they changed the theme song and I was bummed about it. Yeah, now it's all Dance Dance Revolution yeah. and shit. It's like fucking. Yeah. Like you feel like you should be stomping on arrows and shit. <laughs> we are. What do you? Uh, what are your thoughts about it? I really enjoy it. Yeah. Who's I, your favorite character? Monkey D. Luffy. You like regular old, regular old he's dude, He's huh? funny, and he's a young kid, and I don't know. Um, I don't really know all their names. I hate the big nose dude. Like, he's totally useless. Usopp? Yeah, he's fucking useless. That's what I he's said, too. Pussy. Adam tells me he's going to, like, turn into, like, the fucking god of the ocean, but I don't understand how when he's such a bitch now. Yeah, I don't know either. I like Nami. I feel bad for her. I like Nami's her. sister. Nami's sister's a fucking smoke show. Yeah, she is. Um, the, the Marine guy that's like a mouse is weird. <laughs> like some of their stuff's kind of weird. It's super weird, dude. This fucking smoker is weird. He you came me. in, you came in and started watching it when we were, uh, they were fighting the, the, the fish people. And that was so far. I'm, we're in like, I'm going to say we now because you're watching it with me. Yeah. I, I was watching it in the studio by myself and you, uh, dude, the song came on and you were in the doorway. Like you heard that song and you were like, needle scratch. And you came in the fucking doorway and you were like, are you watching this without me? <laughs> I was like, oh, it's one of those now. Yeah. Cause Lucas is watching YouTube. I'm like, he watched that in his room. It's one of those now. Like I can't even come in here and sneak off a couple episodes. You got to watch all of them with me now. 
But I uh, up to where we are currently, I feel like that was the best part so far. So you came in at the best part. Well, they, he fought those fish people for like five episodes. No, it was probably like ten episodes because <laughs> that's like the 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 thing when they get into some shit. Like, just the simplest little thing, they're going to stretch that over 10 episodes. And Kaz and I were talking about that. And I'm like, can you imagine when this shit was new and there was only one every week? That's like two fucking months that they were fighting them fish people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you got to sit there and wait and see what's next. And then they fucking come in next week and it's more of the same. A little bit of jaw jacking, a little, a slight little bit of fucking action. I liked when the fucking uh, Bento Arlong's nose... I was like, oh. Crack that bitch's crack nose. Crack that dick nose. I, that was my favorite part so far. I like the fish people. Mm -hmm. But it's a good show. I relented. Uh, I was I was very opposed to uh, to watching this and starting it, but I'm glad I did. So shout out to Adam. I remember how it goes now. There's always room for you. <laughs> you want to be my friend. We are. We are in the cruise. Well, we shouldn't even know the words because we're looked down on because we don't watch it in Japanese. Oh, sorry. King of the Pirates. Dude, Kaz said the funniest fucking thing to me about that, dude. Because Kaz is on Team team Dub, too. And we were talking about this shit. And I was like, we were kind of clowning on Adam a little bit. It's like, he says it's so immersive. And if you watch it, you get all the subtleties. And you'll actually learn a little bit of Japanese. And Kaz was like, yeah, right, motherfucker. You could say, I'm going to be king of the pirates. So now all of a sudden you fluent? Fuck out of here, dude. <laughs> That's funny. But I really like it. I like the show. I like all their backstories too. Well, that's part of why it's so long too. Is like they go I, they go deep on like the childhood. It was and sad shit. when Sanji left the floating the floating restaurant because they're like he kept calling them like old fart and old whatever. And it was so funny. <laughs> but then everybody's like, I'm gonna miss you, old man. And it was cute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good shit, man. It's good shit, and it's good shit that I could watch with the kids because that's that makes it easier. They could be in the room. Sure, they're, they're, I mean, they might let a goddamn it slip, bastard. or you know, you bastard. You know, there's a little bit of blood. Who fucking cares, yeah. dude? They're watching worse than that. Plus, Lucas is a little fucking G anyway, dude. Like he ain't seeing nothing that's worse than how mm -hmm. he is. Like, oh, you know what? That reminds me. You said you had a Lucas story. Oh, I do. for me. Like, go, you go ahead. You go ahead and tell me your story. All right. Well, you know how he always has my phone. Correct. So I look through the pictures or whatever once in a while and I clean them out because he just takes random pictures of everything. Did he take a dick pic? No. Okay. Worse. Worse? <laughs> take a butthole pic? No. So I'm scrolling through and I'm deleting pictures and I get to this picture and it's just a turd in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> he legit took a shit, took three pictures of his shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had to go through and delete it. I was at work and I'm like scrolling through and I was like, oh, Mackenzie goes, what? And I was like, my kid literally took a picture of his shit. And she's like, what? And I held it up. She's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you show her? She gets gross because it's funny. She gets so grossed out. She gets so grossed out over the littlest things. It's so funny. That is funny. Mm-hmm. He's he's been on one lately, man. Like his mouth has been out of control. Like he's chicken wings, chicken wings, hot dogs, macaroni. I, I gotta get him in here. He's, he's got homies. bars, dude. He was just freestyle rapping the other day and shit. I gotta get him in here to do that. How's that? How's that rhyme go? Chicken wings, chicken wings, hot dogs, and bologna, chicken and macaroni. Two more for my homies. Bars. Okay. <laughs> but um. Like like we said earlier, we've been playing. The you know, the kids been playing outside a lot more recently, and we've been outside a little bit with the uh, the adults and shit. And I went outside. Like you know this, but I went outside the other day. I went into the garage, and the garage door was open, and Logan was in the back of my truck, which I've talked to them about. And Lucas was standing on the fucking hood of my truck, and I'm like, "What the fuck are you doing, bro? Get off of my fucking truck!" Because his little fucking feet are going dented up. Sure. You know, and he was in the back and he got to the front by climbing over the top. Yeah, so like, the only I, way he could have. I thought my roof was going to be fucked up and all that shit. I saw little footprints in the pollen on the 
uh, windshield the next morning or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I, I lost my shit. I told them, I'm like, get the, you guys got the whole fucking neighborhood. Get away from my truck. Stop playing on my truck. Cause shortly after that, they were fucking around in the yard next to my truck. And that little motherfucker ran into it. Remember when he came in the house crying, he fucking smacked his head in the back of my truck. Like stay the fuck away from my truck. Okay. Mm-hmm. Next day I'm taking out the garbage cans and him and the neighbor boy are in the back of my truck. And I, I, Remember what you said because you told me you were like, you don't need to be that dickhead dad that's yelling at all the kids and blah, blah, blah. So I remember what you said. I'm taking the cans down and I'm very calmly. I look over and I said, hey, didn't I ask you boys not to play in my truck? And the neighbor boy was like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he's scrambling around so quick trying to get out of my truck. Lucas puffed his chest out, held his arms out and said, no. That's right. Gang member. (laughs) Just like that, too. Same fucking inflection. Tell him today. He was like, no. Like, like, do something, old man. Like, that's the vibe I got. And I'm like, boy, I'm going to smack the fucking shit out of you. Mm-hmm. He's always... He's shit. He is, dude. He's got something to fucking say all he's the goddamn time, That's man. why I think he's... I think that he's... He had a past life. He's too... He's too old for his age. Like, mentally. Well, we didn't even... We didn't even talk about that. We talked about the Flat Earth Creatures after show or whatever. Um, did you get a chance to listen to our newest? No. No, with Amy? That's where the past life shit would come right. into, man. I, I feel like you would you would enjoy her a lot. You yeah. should you should definitely check that out. Mm-hmm. I feel like you would enjoy her personal podcast too. Yeah, I think so. Because you're you're into that type of thing, mm-hmm. you know. And I I want to I want to get her to do a reading on me. I think you should do one too because I know you got questions about like like you said like the past life shit. Yeah, because I don't I don't think I've I mean you never know, but I don't I don't feel like I've had one, but I feel like he's had one because I also believe that birthmarks could be from a past death. Now, is that just something you believe, or is that something that like you've you've researched? Both. What what if, what is your research turned up? Um, that sometimes, like if you have a birthmark that say, um, like you know, circle shaped, it could be like a bullet wound, an old bullet wound from a past life. Mm. Like Lucas's, um, it looks like a bird, like a sail ship, but it also looks like if you were to like take a sword and like maybe like if you stab through. Like, it would look like almost a knife stabbing, depending oh. on the kind of blade it would be, because, like, the handles look like that. You know what I mean? What if it is a pirate ship? What if he's the king of the pirates? I mean, he might be. He's fucking Monkey D. Luffy, man. What? Maybe that's why he's got that swag. Maybe, but I feel also that if he was going to get stabbed all the way through, that he'd have a, also a birthmark on his back. So it had to have been a shallow mm. knife, if that's what it is. But also the different colors, or it could be shape of an animal. You know, it like kind of looks like an eagle head too to me. Yeah. So that has I, it was a long. Maybe time he ago was bird I, person. You never know, man. But the different colors have something to do with it. It's been a long time since I've looked into it. But I mentioned on on the show it was a long time ago. Yeah. I came with my research. <laughs> I came with my research. Mm-hmm. No, nah, yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to talk to Amy a little bit more about about that shit. But I'll leave that to you. I'll since you, that seems to be more of your uh, expertise or your uh, your interest, rather. Sure. Yeah, you ready to get out of here? Yeah. Get fucking up. spring ahead. Yeah, we got daylight savings tonight. Uh, I think I got an inner circle meeting in about forty five minutes that I need to uh, be present for. Fun. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, hey, we're part of the Inner Circle Podcast Network. Mm-hmm. It's a fine group of programs that, if you like this one, uh, you will love those. Please check out the Simmons and More podcast. Shit happens when you party naked behind the Patreon wall. Uh, DJ coined the term. Shit happens when you Patreon naked. I kind of oh, dig okay. it. Uh, the Plunge, The Hood Diner, Failing Hollywood, and DJ and Beth at The Untrained Eye. Look for all those shows plus Creatures of the Night. I feel like I recently heard Mikey saying that the Winter Circle is supposed to be coming back. We're cool. trying to get back on track with some of that collaboration show network stuff. But, I mean, you know what? At the end of the day, we're all fucking busy. Yep. Which is a good thing. That's, I mean, that's not a, it's not a bad thing. You know, no one's shut down anymore. We're all doing our thing. We're very grateful to be doing so. Yep, yep. Uh, we are the hashtag no offense show. Obviously, you cl- you click play on the podcast. You know what the fuck you're listening to. Please go to htnos.com. There you can find all of our information about our sponsors, about where to find us. Uh, we are htnos on all the social media platforms. You can reach out to us uh, via email at htnos at yahoo.com. Call the hotline. Leave a message, 813-7. 7735706. Uh, my name is Chris. I am the real Wutsky everywhere. My lovely wife, the Duchess. 
I'm Duchess Wetzky on Twitter. And you're such a, t- you're an avid tweeter. You're always on Twitter. So I need to do better. If, if you would you like to. You gotta at me. <laughs> and even when you add, it's 50 50. Do you flip a coin? Is it? That you respond? Absolutely. Oh, I sometimes I throw a heart on there. <laughs> <laughs> I've acknowledged you, peasant. Mm hmm. What the fuck? Oh, shit. I don't know what I was going to say. Something about the royal family. I forgot. Uh, they were on Oprah? They were on Oprah, and it was something I was going to say about that. Not important. I don't like the royal family. Never understood the fascination. Nope. No. Agreed. Whatever. Cancel them. Cancel them all. That was the whole show. Was it they really? They got kicked out of the royal family. They got kicked out or they left? They got kicked out because she's biracial. See, okay, it's late in the game for this. Very I don't know anything about it. I just know like from the headlines I've read. I don't know. I don't know anything about it either. All I know is the queen's a fucking reptile. The goddamn royal family is part of the fucking 13 colony bloodlines that are controlling the fucking world. Look into it. They're eating babies, and that's why they got kicked out. All right. Good deal. Hashtag no offense. Bye. Bruce Lee's on my head, but don't call me a Lee head. Now please excuse me, I got to get my tree fed.